Tips to save money for a recession. Uh, I think a lot of people, I, I was thinking, what do people need? What would people want to do in case we this economic turn happens here in 2023? And money saving, I think, is the biggest one. So we're going to talk about that today. And let's just jump right in. Um, the first thing I want you guys to do is, well, you know, let's before we jump in, a lot of people don't want to help themselves, right? And I know I've been saying this over and over again, but it's just, I've been trying to help people around me, watching them, you know, getting like struggling, getting stressed out and everything. And just a lot of people don't want to help themselves. But if you're one of those people who wants to help yourselves, please listen to the information I'm giving you here today. And please tell me if I'm wrong. Please tell, I know I'm missing a lot of stuff. I can't pack it into, you know, 10 minutes, uh, but I'm going to try to do my best here. But guys, get out of the struggle. We don't need to struggle. If there is a struggle, let's make it the least amount of painful possible, right? Least amount of painful. Right. When you do videos, guys, it's so weird. You're, it's just the stuff that comes out of your mouth, you're like, the least amount of painful. Right? The least amount of pain. God. Okay. And excuse the background noise. It's 6 o'clock in the morning and it's raining outside and I'm recording this in my vehicle. All right. The first thing I want you guys to do is print and observe your bank statement. Oh, I just lost probably about <laughs> half of my listeners. But no, guys, you seriously need to do this. If you want to get your life in order, you need to see the problem and... You know, I'd love to sugarcoat this, but you're the problem. I'm the problem. When you when you print that bank statement, it's nobody else's fault but yours, right? Look at the stuff that you're spending money on. I just went and got myself a, a bean cheese quesadilla yesterday, and it was like $11 for this little tiny quesadilla. And those are the things I look at where I'm like, oh, my God, it's been weeks since I have uh, gone out and bought myself some sort of food, you know, uh, instead of making my own lunches, my my smoothies, which I drink almost consistently for the past decade, but I got hungry and I was working really hard and I wanted to eat something. But but eleven dollars? Come on! So what you're going to see when you print your your um, bank statements is you can kind of see where groceries are going, right? And I mean, you can get if for those of you who really want to go balls to the wall. It's kind of nice to go over your receipts and see all the stuff that like keep them, but it's a lot of work and I doubt anybody's going to do it. But start looking at the extra fat that you're buying, meaning the excess stuff, the cookies, right? The cookie dough, the, uh, I don't know, the, the smoothie, uh, the, the sushi that you bought at the grocery store, all these little extra things that you don't really need. If you're truly hurting, you're going to find out by going through all these steps. Again, you don't have to keep all your receipts and write down all the fat stuff, right? Just look at your bank account. It's, you know, most people have... I guess I don't know what most people are doing, but mine, I, I probably have maybe about 25 transactions on my bank account, my bank statements. And I can see gas, I can see rent, I can see a grocery store. You can see, you know, exactly where everything's coming from, cell phones and stuff like that. And you start adding this stuff up and treating your life like a business, as I love to say. And now you're going to start to see where you're bleeding out. And unfortunately, if you don't get a handle on this, and you keep just basically pissing in the wind, shooting off the hip. You know, you're never really going to get anywhere. And this is the biggest, biggest thing, I think, for people's lives, whether in a recession or not, to get ahead in life and stop being, you know, poor or uh, um, just getting a, just a getting by an average Joe. If you really, really, we want to go buy that house, right? We're going to talk about that today, about understanding what you, what you want, right? Um, so... Actually, let's just move into that. Let's find out what you want, what you're saving for, right? If you're going to do all this, you need some sort of um, fortification. You need a reason, right? You got to find your why. So if you want to go buy a house, if you want to go buy a car, which a car is a very poor investment, guys, don't do that. It's a, it's a liability, not an asset. But if, you, if you're saving up for something, I've got some notes here that I'm imagining what people are probably saving for is to pay off debt. It's probably one. I want to get out of debt, which is smart. Emergency fund, which I think uh, a lot of people don't even think about, or maybe you want to invest, right, to get yourself out of this, get yourself uh, into a, a, a small little side hustle, or maybe go buy that house, or whatever it is, stocks, or whatever it is that you're into, invest, or maybe the things that I look at, and I keep saying all the time, is people don't look as investing in such thing as a garden. Uh, my garden, I spent probably about $25,000 in the past three years honing this thing in. It's a new invention of mine, right? And I looked at that, I'm like, $25,000. Wow. I could have bought, I could have used that to buy a house in 2021, right? <laughs> but I spent that money over the years of 2019 developing this business, developing my food. So yes, I 
it probably would have been smarter for me to save that money and just buy myself a house. But at the same token, I look at, I'm feeding myself uh, some really good food, right? And this could also turn into a business. It's one of my dreams for the future job is to be able to sell my garden products and my garden experiences and things like that. But you look at that investing, uh, it didn't make me a penny as of yet. It didn't make fast, in fact, it's costing me money, but it's feeding me. It's those ghost incomes that you look at, these things that, that aren't necessarily money, but it's money you would have had to spend on something such as food. So find out what you want and start feeding on that. I think I, uh, I think I wrote on here to get angry and uh, get really angry about what's happening to you and utilize that. Um, well, let's not necessarily say angry. Let's just say, why don't you get fortified? Find out what you want. And that's the reason why you're not buying that sushi at the grocery store. That's the reason why you're not buying that bean cheese, you know, for $11. You start adding all that stuff into a jar and you'll see how fast that stuff starts to accumulate. But yeah. And if you're going to save money, then I think you also moving forward need to understand just basics of inflation. And a lot of people aren't going to do that, right? I mean, there's so many people are just blindly going, just, just save money, right? And we'll talk about that too here. We need to understand that the cost of living when things go up, the money, let's just say you put $100 in the bank, right? And inflation goes up. What is inflation? It's the cost that of banks having to loan other banks money, right? Uh, it's the cost of, it's the dollar when they print more money into circulation. I think a lot of people thought this was conspiracy, but now everybody, I think, pretty much knows they can print money at will. In fact, they printed, I think, 45% of the money that ever exists in the United States was printed in 2021. <laughs> If my uh, years aren't off, I believe it's 2020 or 2021. So what does that mean? That means you have $100 out in circulation. Now you, you printed 45, right? There's $145 uh, out in circulation. So you see how that works? So it's not quite that your money just got cut in half. It's only $100 is only worth 50 bucks now. But you could pretty much say that $100 is probably worth around $70, right? And it depends what you're looking at. The CPI, the CPI, as people like to call it, uh, consumer price index. There's certain things out there where you look at a gallon of milk. So just the same as I was saying, you grow a garden. You're not making any money off that thing, but that thing's secretly tax-free, right? Paying you in dividends or, or uh, at credits of food. In order to go to the grocery store, what used to be, say, a salad for $3 is now $5. So your money's not buying you very much. That's inflation. So if you're going to save money, um, well, well, I guess we'll get into that. Uh, I'm jumping the gun and I'm all over the place. I need a referee, someone here to keep me in line. So uh, I think you should understand the basics of investing as well. And I've been kind of touching on that. I've never heard really anybody talking about sustainable living, resilient living, permaculture and stuff like that, as far as an investment being a ghost uh, investment, right? A ghost uh, income. I always hear them talk about money and things like that and real estate investing stocks and stuff like that. But the basics of investing guys, if you keep in mind what I keep telling you guys about growing your own food, producing your own electricity, whatever you can, these are, uh, uh ghost expenses. And these are, these are things I lost my train of thought. <laughs> these are things that you don't really have to pay for. So this is actually the basics of, of investing, I like to say, is assets and liabilities, right? So when you look at growing your own food, we'll just keep using that as an example, or, you know, like as far as like having chickens or growing a garden, these things keep multiplying. So an asset and liability, right? If we are into investing money, we will look in, say, real estate, right? You can buy a house, you can rent it out, uh, you can live in it, you can build ADUs, auxiliary dwelling units, things like that. It starts to cash flow in. That's an asset. And then earlier we said, well, maybe you want to save up to buy a car. The moment you purchase a car and drive it off the lot, it devalues by, I can't remember what it was like, by something ridiculous, like 15%, right? So you bought a car for $100,000. It's only worth $85,000. If you just immediately turned it back in just because the tires left the road, right? And it just starts to depreciate. It starts to break down. It ages. And it's not really worth that much, right? So that's a liability. An asset, on the other hand, is if uh, I look at, and we could maybe take a vehicle, Maybe I'm complicating this too much. I don't know. But look at the vehicle that I'm sitting in right now. Cash paid for, free and clear. 
The, um, this thing is a money generator. It gets me to work, hauls tools. So in contrast, it's just a four-seat vehicle that drives someone to work to and fro, doesn't do anything. It gets you to your job, right? But is, is it completely necessary? No, you can actually ride a bike, depending on where you're at. You can take a bus, right? There's many things you can carpool. There's many things that you can do that would actually save you money. In my case, this thing hauls tools. This thing hauls materials. As estimate, it makes me a heck of a lot more money than someone working a nine to five job and just using it as a passenger vessel. So basics of investing, I think if people are gonna save, you need to understand just assets and liability. Everything that you do should pay you back something. Try to get in that mind frame too. And just, if it's not money, it's, it's a salad, right? Or it's a gallon of milk or a dozen of eggs. So savers are losers statement from uh, Robert Kiyosaki. And I wanted to talk about my thoughts on this because I've been really, really studying economics and things like that, how to save money, how to invest. And, you know, you got this crazy guy, Robert Kiyosaki saying that savers are losers and he's right. A lot of people, it doesn't mean you are a loser. It just means the fact that you're saving money, you're losing money. You're not going to really come out ahead. So my thoughts on that, though, is little cookies that I found is like, should I not save any money? Should I invest it all? And uh, I'm looking going, everybody needs an emergency fund, right? So we start to listen to these people talk, and a lot of them don't go through many details. I think they want you to buy their books and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, everybody's got to make a dollar. Everybody's hungry and trying to get ahead, I understand. But people like me who are trying to learn is looking going, well, you're leaving a lot of stuff out. So if you hear that statement that savers are losers, yes, if you keep saving your money and just, just for the fact of saving money, let's just save a hundred, you know, well, a hundred thousand dollars, I think is not a bad emergency fund. Let's save 200, 300, $400,000, just keep it in the bank to live on. You're going to end up uh, in the red because as we said, inflation, right? That million dollars that you had maybe saved up for retirement is now only worth 720000 right? It's only worth 650000 depending on how the inflation, right, how much devaluation of the American dollar happens. You're better off, like the rich, to put that money into something that's actually going to generate money, like a business or stocks or, and I'm not saying any, a lot of these things get risky. I think they're all risky if you don't know what you're doing, real estate and stuff like that. Just get it out into something. <clears throat> to me, on that note just now, just kind of hit me, was doing a large-scale garden, right? Like me investing $20,000 in worm castings and equipment and stuff like that. That's going to feed me for decades. That is a safe, secure um, investment uh, doing container gardening, right? You could haul, even if you're renting like me, you can haul that garden goes with you. The soil that I've built, I own that soil. I don't own the dirt where I live, but I own that soil which cost me a lot of money in the past, but I, I take it with me and it keeps getting richer and richer. And that I think is a very powerful thing to, uh, to display out there to people is you got to start thinking creatively. Next is the power of true motivation and discipline. So as I said, if you want to get ahead and you want to get out of where you're at, you need to look, start off looking at those bank statements. You know, there's a heck of a lot more I can share in the show, but you have to be in charge of your life. Nobody's going to come and save you. There's no Calvary, right? There's no ambulance, no financial ambulance coming to patch you up. You're on your own, kid. All of us, I'm on my own. And no, you know what? Nobody really cares. They're all trying to survive. But the true motivation and discipline. Let's start with just the first motivation, motivation to get out of here, right? Be motivated, self-motivated. Look around you, look at those bake statements and look how embarrassing it is that, that the self-control that you have or don't, you know, or that you don't have, right? But spending all this money, look at it up and look at the amount that you're just pissing away, right? And motivate yourself to go, okay, I'm going to start learning, right? And that's one cool thing to be motivated, but a lot of people peter out, right? That's what I have on my next is the degrading power of false motivation and discipline. And we're going to meld these two together, the false and the true. The true is you can have motivation, but you have to know your why. As we said, what are you looking to do? Invest to, 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 to me, get out of debt is probably the biggest one I think people should do. And then I think you should save an emergency fund and then give yourself a pat on the back and a break, right? And then get into investing and things like that and know why. But the, the biggest thing is you can have the motivation, but if you don't have the discipline, is probably the biggest, biggest, not probably the biggest thing that people don't have. It's just like when you're working out and you're trying to lose weight, right? Uh, are you getting up early in the morning going to the gym? Are you? Do you want to get thin? Do you want to get financially fit? 
do you want to start that big garden, that side hustle, that go on that uh, vacation? I don't know. The vacation thing is a horrible example. But do you want to just get ahead in life and be able to sleep in, uh, do art, do the things that you want to basically do to cut it short, right? You have to have that that oomph, that, that feeling in you. And you also have to have that discipline. Get up and start making things happen for yourself with that dream. Keep your eye on the prize. Stop worrying about it. I say all the time what people or other people are thinking and doing. I mean, observe, but notice that these, these Debbie Downers, these people around you, these doom and gloomers, they're just sitting there fortifying themselves at the gas station of why everything just sucks and we can't do anything, right? Get yourself into that self-motivation and that discipline and <coughs> start working. I, I should probably do a show on how I've organized my life I have a, like a full blown schedule. Every hour is accounted for. I wake up, you know, do some meditation, some breathing, some self uh, uh, actualization, some self uh, um, motivating, creative uh, visualization. Right, start start whatever you can do to start getting exercise and keep this thing on a regimen, just like a business. Right, and you don't have to do it, guys. I I've, I talk about running your life like a business, and then and I think a lot of people get turned off by it, but. That's how I'm able to do what I do. That's how I'm able to take off on many retirements, work three, you know, take off three to four months a year is because I plan everything out. I know I have the security too. When I take that amount of time off, everything's already paid for. It's all going to work out. It's already in the bag. So that relieves a lot of stress. And it also gives me the power to go what it is that I want to do. Like my garden business. I, I have two hours, three hours a day to devote to that. Uh, on off work times to just devote myself entirely mentally to it, to en enhance it, to, to improve it, and also physically to get out there and just do it with no worries in the background. So guys, I don't know how much more to tell you on this. I just, I don't really have much hope for people that they're just, they're the laggers. They're just not, they're never going to get anywhere. And if you're someone who wants to get s somewhere, get, get yourself ahead in life. You got to get away from these people, man. Start working really hard. I guarantee you, You'll be tired and you'll want to sleep <laughs> and you'll be getting a lot of things done. You won't have time to sit there worrying about what other people are thinking, right? What is the saying that goes that, that stupid people just talk about events, right? And, uh, and smart people talk about other people and thoughts and or not thoughts, but other people and uh, geniuses talk about ideas. I don't know if I mixed that one up, but genius is ba basically from the spectrum of stupid people. Just sitting there, is anything supposed to happen, you know? Talk about events and people and just talking crap, basically. It's smart people sit around and start discussing ideas. Maybe you don't have anybody to talk to, like myself, where you're you're kind of isolated a little bit, right? Um, and you're, <laughs> you're doing these freakish things. You're going against the grain on what everybody else is doing. You have, your information is completely... Uh, unknown to people. They're like, what? I have no idea what the heck you're talking about. So you have to have the dialogue with yourself to go, hey, what do I need to do to get ahead? What are the sequence of events of things that need to happen? Where are my shortfalls? Where's all my weaknesses? I think that's one of my superpowers is to identify your weaknesses and your failures. And I mean, really get in there and look and notice what you're not good at, what you failed at. Is it worth doing again? Can you do it better? Can you keep trying? Are you self-motivated? Are you biggest one of all? Are you self-disciplined, right? Beat yourself up. Who didn't wake up at five o'clock this morning to go exercise? This guy, because you slept in. Your fault. You're going to be unhealthy if you keep doing this. If you keep eating sugar at nighttime, right? Get up and work out. Get up and do some breathing. Take care of your health, your financial health, your spiritual health. It's all up to you, guys. So to save money... <coughs> excuse me i know i didn't give you guys like some solid like oh here's some huge tip like like step by steppers but i think once you guys get the motivation and the, that discipline and i think that once you guys see that light at the tunnel and you know your why you'll be unstoppable i know that you will you just have to want it and i don't think a lot of people want it uh, if you guys want to hear more details on how to save money like detail by detail message me that's what i'm here for i need ideas for content and um, I can create some wonderful stuff for you guys. So, guys, that's the show. I got to get going to work. It's going to be pouring rain here today. So I hope this message finds you well. And I'll see you guys on the next one.